Um, last time we've met, we were able to successfully include all required libraries to our project, but uh, uh, all of those are quite useless without proper configuration. And this is exactly what we will do uh, in this video. Sometimes the configuration issues turns into real science and uh, introduce uh, difficult to find and resolve uh, issues like in, uh, incompatible versions of libraries and, and other issues we will have to deal with. So it's okay if we will not succeed from the uh, uh, first attempt, then we will resolve our issues on the fly. So um, <coughs> relax and let's get started. The Java web application boot up starts from the reading the uh, web application descriptor file, uh, which is uh, web.xml. Let's go to it and open. A lot of things and configurations we are missing here right now. So we need to tell the Tonga application server how to act on this particular uh, application. W I will add the configurations one by one and uh, try to describe meaning of uh, each. I am not quite confident at all of them and I do not have to. At least because uh, one of w one exact reason. I did not have uh, any reasons yet to configure differently so I just keep it default uh, common project configuration so don't let it bother you until you really need to use and configure it for your exact needs. And uh, this is not the common task who you will re be re required to do at your job, so don't panic. Also, these configurations are uh, uh, performed once when the project starts and most likely it will be involved into project which already has uh, all these things uh, configured and uh, ready to play. So, uh, and most likely this will be done by the some uh, system architect. Yeah, but because we are doing our own project uh, alone, we need to configure and to do it. But uh, once you get done with the with the configuration you will get the powerful uh, platform for developing uh, large enterprise applications with the high level of data precision so uh, which, is cu which is currently uh, our common uh, choice for uh, insurance, banking, government, uh, military, science and even space exploration so that's, that's a kind of motivation for you Okay, what we have here, we have a uh, very min minimalistic uh, configuration. We have display name and the name of our application and uh, one welcome file that will be loaded on the first access to our application uh, root. The first thing that we will do, we will configure the main uh, context parameters that will uh, hold some uh, values for uh, our application. Uh, I already have prepared the parameters. I will copy it uh, one by one from the buffer and uh, try to explain uh, the meaning of it. So the first one is the uh, param with name context config location and that is the main spring framework uh, configuration file uh, that will hold all further uh, configurations uh, which include spring configurations and also will uh, include the uh, spring java bean uh, definitions so this file will be very important in our application the next param 
is and that is the file extension that will hold our uh, uh, Java surfaces uh, views the next one this one enables the development mode uh, to the facelets and uh, that will help uh, with some debugging I guess and, uh, and introduce some more features for development so let's keep it true next uh, this is al also uh, is related to the development mode um, that uh, makes the fa facelets refresh uh, period to the, the configured in the value I mean, in our case one second I've never used this feature uh, I guess but but I guess that's a very handy way and probably we, we would like to use it so we'll configure it later if we uh, depending on our needs that is uh, all for uh, params by now the next thing we must configure is the uh, required spring servlets and uh, filters as well as uh, some listeners let's uh, proceed with the listeners and uh, only one listener by now will be configured in our uh, webxml file and that is a uh, context loader listener uh, which is a uh, spring uh, listener class that is uh, responsible for uh, context loading yeah? let's go to the servlets and now I'm pasting in the servlet declarations with the uh, mapping so the first one is a resources servlet which I guess is responsible for some uh, resources resolving and the proper mapping for it the next one servlet is uh, more important and that will be spring dispatcher servlet which is uh, very important and uh, uh, clever server th implementation by Spring which handles all the incoming and outcoming requests uh, and of course responses uh, to the and from application and then resolves it uh, them to the correct modules and uh, services so you see if uh, even if we are working with the uh, Spring uh, Java application uh, the Spring itself still use the servlets in the inside the uh, engine and operations so remember this this is a entry point to the Spring Webflow uh, Java web, web application so I guess I do not uh, have to describe the all stuff going here. It's just basically servlet uh, is the servlet name, uh, servlet class implementation, and uh, some uh, initialization param parameters. Uh, we show uh, we put here the context config location, which is uh, our application context XML file and uh, by empty param uh, value we point to the root folder and this servlet is loaded on the application startup by tomcat so yeah I forgot the mapping for this servlet I will copy the mapping and here's the mapping coming and the mapping just says that uh, to access the servlet we define here we will uh, have to type in the this URL to get into the application starting point you can def uh, you can uh, type here 
uh, I guess everything you want this is just uh, short and easy to read application and by including this uh, well uh, this uh, name and following by any flow we will uh, all the requests and responses will go through the dispatcher server okay let's go forward this is another servlet with name faces servlet which I guess the does his job well and uh, now let's go to the filters these are um, just some encoding filters which application will use more info you need to know about that and the last one field uh, field which is uh, also filter yeah and that is a spring security filter which we will add later uh, because when we will uh, starting to use the spring security just uh, do not do not want to it's introduce uh, the additional issues if we will have some problems so let's leave common here that we will um, add the additional spring filters uh, spring security filters later when required okay Let's save this file and go to the next one and uh, the next one will be the one we uh, pointed in the config location parameter so this copy it and you can now save the web xml file and close it. In the same folder uh, webinf we create the new XML file and paste the name of our application context XML we just copied with the basic template click finish and now we have our application context XML which is uh, empty and uh, let's put uh, the basic uh, XML namespaces in it and that will be beans with some namespaces and where's our closing tag and here's our close tag so we will be putting here the all the bean application uh, all the beans we will use in our application as well as uh, bean configuration and uh, uh, hibernate configuration and all related configurations will be all in this file so it will be included by special tags from the separated uh, XML configuration file so this file will be clean with some includes and uh, the rest of uh, it will be the bean declarations for our for our, our application and let's start by the way the with our next file and uh, that will be configured via spring beans and uh, we need currently to include it in the application context and then create it and uh, to do that we do open tag which is import resource and uh, depending on uh, where the particular file will be located we type in the 
path to it. So we will create all configuration files in our uh, webin folder. So we just put the file name with the extension. And the first one will be the dot data source config dot xml and let's create it right away copy the name go to webinf webinf and create new xml file paste it finish it's also empty and let's paste here the some namespaces which will uh, require more because we will uh, do here some uh, tran transaction IP configurations as well and let's proceed with the our uh, data source which is the same as the database configuration so the first one will be a bean called with ID data source which basically will hold our uh, our connection data to the Oracle database or uh, MySQL or uh, Microsoft SQL database whatever if we need the uh, something different from the Oracle database uh, as the backend database implementation we just uh, substitute the uh, date source uh, interface implementation with the particular database vendor implementation like um, MySQL date source or uh, Microsoft S SQL uh, date source and provide the correct connection data to them and uh, the Oracle data source is uh, is basically the implementation of uh, Sun Microsystems uh, data source interface which defines the service methods that uh, required to work the particular database driver uh, with some additional and useful features like uh, connection pooling and uh, caching and, uh, and other stuff so we define here the bean with ID date source for those of you who are not yet familiar with the spring uh, Java beans um, I will uh, provide you more details uh, later when we will uh, create uh, our own Java beans and uh, because we will uh, uh, use a lot of them in our application uh, just now it's uh, enough that you know that uh, the way of bean uh, declaration is uh, following uh, all beans have the unique ID uh, identifier identifier and the Java bean class that's basically simple Java class with the some variables and the methods in it. Some additional attributes here and by defining properties we say Spring to inject these values into the this class uh, class variables which are private with some uh, get and set methods uh, that are public. So okay uh, we'll discuss it uh, later in more details just just now it's uh, just an introduction to beans so in this bean we set the Oracle date source class uh, variables the following values the Oracle date source variable connection uh, caching enabled to true means that the Oracle date source has the variable named like this and we set the uh, it's a boolean variable and uh, we set the value to true to it 
so this is some caching functionality which uh, I guess provide more uh, performance like improvements and the next uh, three is the URL this is a connection string to our database which uh, varies depending on the database implementation whether it's the uh, Microsoft SQL or uh, MySQL so always starting from the GDBC uh, driver uh, interface name and then the database specific things in our case it's uh, Oracle uh, the driver vendor thing the driver name it's, uh, Drivers named like Oracle theme driver and the connection host lay, uh, like on, uh, if we have the database on our local machine, the local host port and the service name kind of listener, and of course, username and password to connect it to that database. And by the way, uh, there's an uh, Apache uh, generic basic Oracle, uh, I'm sorry, date source implementations, which are suitable for uh, all of the databases. And you do not provide, uh, you do not have to provide the exact uh, date source implementation. Just enough if you're using a generic one. And uh, in those cases, you will uh, need to provide uh, additional property, which uh, is a driver class property with the um, database vendor uh, specific implementation of driver. So let's go to the next bean, and that will be our entity manager. And uh, from this point, we are uh, connecting the our date source with the Hibernate by providing the reference to the date source being here. Here's the ID, and we provide the uh, it as a reference to the date source property in the this class local container entity manager factory bean. So in Spring world language, we just say we inject this dependency in this class variable. So this is called Spring injection. We just have provided the date source to the entity manager factory bean. And another one property with name. Uh, Java Persistence IP, the GPA vendor adapter, and inject into that property another bean, but uh, in some different way. We could uh, define this bean like data source with the unique ID, or we can just uh, put the put the value inside property tags, and this bean will be injected. It, it has uh, it hasn't uh, unique ID even if it hasn't it has not a unique ID and here we just say that we want to use the hibernate um, GPA implementation as the most popular today and of course you can use some different GPA implementations in our case we're using hibernate and set to that hibernate a GPA vendor adapter class, the following properties with following values. So we configure the show SQL uh, property in that class with the value true. That means that every SQL operation Hibernate will make to the database will be locked into the our console so that we need what hib hibernate actually doing right now and what queries it has uh, executed 
in the database. So that's uh, very convenient in the development mode. So it can be disabled later when the application goes to production. Uh, this have no clue what this actually does. And uh, the database platform variable holds the dialect uh, which actually to use uh, when communicating with the database. So if, if uh, even uh, Hibernate can work uh, with uh, most of the uh, database vendors still we are required to sh uh, say which dialect we want to use because uh, different database uh, uses the some specific SQL features and uh, specific specific uh, date structures e even uh, if they all use uh, structured query language so you n now know that the Hibernate dialect uh, package holds all the required dialects to work with the different databases. So we have configured uh, our uh, date source with the entity manager and the next thing we need to configure is the transactions. Because uh, all enterprise applications use the transactions to make the atomic operations on the very important data um, which prevents the corruption of data when the some concurrent threads uh, access to the data. Uh, we'll also use transactions in our application and uh, that's done by the special uh, annotations uh, like uh, transactional and other using uh, using which we will annotate the required methods or classes uh, and to understand what transaction ne uh, means we will uh, we can just imagine the simple case when financial transaction is made from the one bank to the another one so let's say we want to send the 100 uh, bucks to the another account holder so imagine the imagine the uh, account holder that want to make the payment to the another account holder. So it initiate in it initiate uh, he initiates the payment transaction and for uh, one hundred dollars and uh, uh, those are uh, taken from uh, his balance off. So he loses uh, one hundred dollars in his balance and another account holder received that 100 bucks and uh, his balance is increased by 100 bucks. Uh, these two operations uh, actually there's uh, a lot of operations in in the middle of that transaction um, but uh, let's say we have two operations and these two operations are separate so the first query to database which uh, changes the available balance amount for on the first account account and the second query in the another banking system uh, which performs the changing the balance amount in the way of increasing it so let's say if the first operation were successful and the uh, s second operation uh, went wrong and introduced some exceptions in it. If we were not using transaction then uh, imagine what will happen. The these uh, 100 bucks will, will be lost some somewhere forever. Nor the first account holder uh, have them and nor the uh, second account holder will receive them. So to handle that cases we use transactions uh, to execute all these transactions as an atomic operation so that if the first query on the uh, first account were successful 
and the second one uh, were uh, fa failed. Then the all transaction will be rolled back to the starting uh, uh, to the point where where it started. So the account number two will uh, not receive these uh, 100 bucks, bucks, and the account number one will not lose that 100 bucks because transaction were uh, cancelled, rollbacked, and of course particular. Uh, event signalizing about the problem will be logged in the some logging book and then in investigated uh, why this happened and uh, fixed as soon as possible so uh, now you know that transactions are uh, used to prevent the data cor corruption so it is especially important in such operations as the bank transfers and uh, uh, let's say all related operations that are uh, dealing with the money so let's proceed with the transaction configuration and uh, we do the configuration by defining the being called transaction manager which is the uh, spring framework managed GPA transaction manager and pass pass to it the reference to our date source uh, as well as uh, entity manager we defined here uh, above yet we have to configure another things with transactions that's not enough but uh, 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 yeah you probably noticed that the in these cases we part the uh, value using the value attribute and uh, here or here we pass the reference to actual B so here we pass the value which is true or false on or another s another string you see the Eclipse uh, provides our some description that uh, we always almost always we pass the in the spring properties the string values and then it's uh, converted to some integer or boolean or, or whatever so uh, but in these cases with where we use the ref attribute we pass the reference to the bean and not the value so we pass a lot uh, complex that structure comparing to the simple string value so let's go forward and uh, configure our transactions the next thing we want to configure is uh, tell the uh, that we want to uh, manage transactions using connotations and we do it that way with the tag annotation driven and uh, passing the transaction manager to it so from this point we can uh, use annotations to manage our tr transactions and the last one another bean which is uh, this one which is I guess something important uh, yet I can't uh, say more in details what does it mean but as I said previously you do not have to uh, know everything about these configurations just enough if they work fine for you so okay we have done with our date source configuration uh, remember that we do not have database at the moment uh, installed or maybe you have or then you can create some uh, oracle schema and uh, uh, type here the correct the user and password variables so we will uh, I will uh, install the oracle database later in this video so just by now this uh, some default data okay let's save the date source configuration and proceed with the webflow configuration 
let's close the date source configuration and here we will add another import and this time the configuration file will be named as web flow config.xml and of course we want to create that copy the name and in the same folder create new xml file and we have the another file which, uh, in which we will have to put some configuration beans the first thing is the namespaces as you know and a lot of them is here no explanation uh, you do not oh my God. you do not need explanation that that's basic uh, xml namespaces all of this stuff of course uh, will be available available on the subversion repository so that you can just copy paste it yeah you do not need to type it type it manually um, okay here we should define some uh, listener beans like this one which is GPA flow execution listener to which we uh, to which constructor we pass the our entity manager factory and transaction manager we created previously I guess this configuration will be responsible to handle the persistence um, during uh, our journey through the web flow flow CM let's go next just another um, listener bean and now we want to define the flow executor with references to the these our two listeners and uh, by the way you do not have to order this uh, like this uh, for example uh, first listeners and then and only then flow executor no you do not have to do that way you can uh, define listeners uh, after the file executor or even in the another file so it will be okay it will be handled by the spring context and the flow executor is basically the service that will execute the web flows and drive them so we'll need we'll uh, need also create the flow registry you will uh, where the all the our created web flows will be registered and the Spring Webflow engine will know about the uh, existence of them. And here's coming our flow registry. And it's looking very nice. Uh, ID flow registry, then the uh, faces flow builder services, which is uh, not defined yet, we'll uh, define it later and the base path where our, our flows will be located and uh, we say the spring web flow where to uh, search for them and that is will, will be web in flows and uh, the pattern uh, that will be used uh, to name our flows and uh, this is will be this one our flows folder will contain the folder with uh, named as our flow and then the exact flow uh, definition starting from the some flow name and uh, ending with flow.xml you will understand it uh, when we start uh, we'll start to cre create our flows so by now let's create this folder so that we uh, do not forget it uh, so we see the web in flows let's copy just folder name and create here new folder name it flows finish okay 
we can go forward. Later we will create some example file. Just uh, let's finish the con configuration. And as I promised, we define these uh, flow builder services and uh, uh, set the development attribute uh, value true so that it helps us to debug our uh, flaws and such stuff. Okay, let's go next. Define some another beans. Don't ask what they mean exactly. Um, here we just uh, give the reference to our flower registry, and uh, that's a kind of flower handler mapping. Okay, let's go next, and the next one will be the bean uh, GSF flower handler editor. Uh, to which property we pass our flow executor. Uh, don't drill inside this too, too deeply, you do not have to understand this all because uh, uh, this will uh, work and uh, when you require the uh, to change it then you will uh, will uh, google some information on it and found explanation hope you will understand. So let's go next. Another, uh, another configuration that points to that something uh, related to the facelets, which is basically our Java server faces in conjunction with facelets. And uh, a few variables set here like prefix suffix. Yet another place where we, where we define the this X HTML uh, extension, which will be will hold our GSF content. And another configuration. Don't know what this means. Okay, I think we're done with the Webflow configuration. Now let's proceed with the another uh, another one. This one we will uh, save. Uh, close application context uh, you, you can save and uh, close also we'll uh, add the additional import here wh when we are we'll use the and configure the spring security by now just leave these two and close application context so what we Wire here. Yet we are uh, missing some faces config here. So let's create another configuration file. And give name to it faces config.xml. And here I paste in the namespaces with one single configuration, and that is expression language configuration for uh, Java server faces. Save that file and done with it. Let's close it and see that uh, icon has been changed to something uh, more beautiful. And the coffee bean uh, means that it has some bean configuration inside that XML file. We'll create one uh, new additional uh, configuration file later on in, in the web in folder, and that will be security uh, Spring security configuration. Right now we uh, skip that because we are not going to use right now the Spring security. The next thing we will do is logging logging configuration uh, so that we can uh, open our uh, Eclipse console and see the exceptions and uh, errors introduced by uh, 
our configuration and so on. So to do that we go to the, uh, we close these all um, folders and go to the resources folder. It's empty right now and inside that we create the uh, file called just a general file and give the name to that log for java dot properties finish inside that I paste, uh, paste uh, some uh, common configuration for logging which will help us to debug and uh, see the error message in our uh, standard out console. So this is means uh, this this comment just says all that direct uh, log messages to standard out. So save that file and uh, we see that all the transaction bindings, webflow, hibernate and all spring uh, framework uh, messages will be directed to the standard out so that we see what uh, are, uh, are going there so close that another uh, file will we require to create in the resources folder is the persistence context uh, file but that should uh, should uh, be inside the another folder which we'll create right now in the resources folder and uh, folder and the name of that folder is uh, meta inf Inside that folder, we create a new file, which is XML file, and give the name to that persistence.xml file. Okay, okay, finish. Into this file, I paste in some. Uh, common namespace configuration that looks like uh, that and uh, this file is required by Hibernate um, which will uh, contain a uh, name of the classes that are subjects for object relational mapping. Uh, we'll uh, see this in more details later when we will uh, create our own entities and uh, ask Hibernate to persist it to the database. It's called object relational mapping. So by uh, this file, we get uh, Hibernate to know that what classes uh, are uh, able to persist are persistent. So save this file. Uh, it's okay that we do not have any classes right now, just uh, our application will not start without this file, so we create it uh, in advance. Save this file and uh, close it. And we see that icon changed to some object relational uh, mapping icon. And now I think that we are ready to give some uh, test shot to our application. But before that we need to create some uh, flow. Uh, to test with and uh, some j uh, Java surface pages. Okay, we we'll do it right now. Uh, just another th uh, interesting thing uh, about Spring uh, configuration is the Spring elements, which are now empty, and that's because we uh, didn't tell the Spring uh, plugin about the existence of those uh, all of those uh, configuration files and uh, we will do it right now so that uh, 
to, it will be convenient to access them and debug them. So click, right, right click, uh, properties. Here, uh, here are some uh, validator configurations with the, uh, which will leave uh, default. So the Spring uh, plugins will validate the beans and web flows and other things uh, not so important. And we need uh, open the bean support option. And here we add the Spring configuration files to our uh, um, Spring elements. So click Add. Oh, go down and open the source folder, main web app, web inf, and uh, select uh, only those with the coffee, coffee bean, so that webxml is not spring uh, related file as well as uh, faces config so just these three and later will be the security as well uh, select that click OK and here these added uh, check the enable support for import element integration files so that we do not receive any warnings from spring plugins uh, about these import tags Uh, OK, click OK. And if we open now Spring Elements, we see that we have a uh, Beans folder in uh, that, and if we open, we see our configuration files here. And uh, can expand and see exact Beans inside. Some another interesting things uh, transaction manager and uh, okay web flow configuration so that sometimes helps us It's okay that uh, this icon shows that some warnings are inside because we can't just can't get rid of all of warnings. Uh, we can do only one thing to avoid this: is is, is uh, create the config set that uh, that will make these files uh, aware. Of, of existence of each other. So we just create new config set and give the name to that config. And uh, select all these three configuration files in that config, click OK, and here's our uh, configuration set click OK and we uh, got rid of the warnings so that's very nice hope we will uh, not introduce new ones so if we open then another uh, option is config which will do the same as these three Okay, let's uh, go forward. Now, we, now you see that uh, folders and uh, files are marked with some letters uh, that, for our convenience, that shows which uh, folders contain some Spring-related uh, uh, configurations and Spring beans, and which folders and which files as well contain. And we see that web app contains some Spring-related files. 
and here's the spring managed uh, configuration files and as well as uh, it will al also the give the letters to the files related to flaws with the F uh, letter uh, instead of S. Uh, okay, and yeah, another folder we want to uh, um, I'm sorry, yeah, folder we want to create in the web app folder is the folder that will contain our uh, CSS files, uh, cas cascade style sheets. And uh, let's create it so that we don't for forget it. Uh, and give the name you want. I'll name it CSS. Okay, that's uh, that is done. And and let's create the web flow we wanna run run the uh, the test with. So uh, here's our fol folder files, and uh, we want to create the folder inside flows folder with and give that folder name of our flow. And let's say this will be our main flow. So type in main because we remember. Uh, the pattern we gave to the our configuration that flows will be stored in the exact structure here you see the folder with flow name then the exact the flow XML definition and in inside the main folder we create new web flow definition file and the Eclipse will help uh, with that and we see the spring, uh, spring web flow definition file click that next and type in the flow name which is our main and uh, dash uh, remember the pattern flow dot xml and uh, uncheck the second checkbox because we already uh, have the spring nature for our project. Click next. Type in the flow ID, which is uh, also main. And uh, no actions are required to do here. Click finish. And our first flow are created. So you see the icon of XML file change to some uh, gear and uh, our uh, folder is uh, assigned by the uh, F letter and inside we see the our flow file with F and uh, it's already been added to the spring elements you see the web flow subfolder here now if you open you see the all of your flaws here fine now now we'll uh, define um, one single view state and uh, give the unique ID um, The view state means actually is basically that uh, this is view that currently uh, user application user or client whatever see in the current moment. So if you have the many view states that that is uh, those points when uh, client sees some uh, some uh, picture some uh, uh, user interface uh, changes in in uh, his browser. Probably you can uh, read the some documentation here. Yeah, you see that a state where the user participates when a view state is entered, the flow pauses and control goes to the user. So this is more uh, precise and uh, de detailed description. After some 
think time the user assumed this flow and the view state by signaling an event. So you can read this very interesting. And uh, with the ID we specify the view which to we want to show the client. So let's let's type in something here like welcome uh, and uh, this name will be uh, will require to create a X HTML view file uh, with the Java server faces inside um, exact with that name in uh, flow our main flow folder so that it can be showed to the client so by now we just save this file and uh, as I said in one of the first uh, videos that um, the Spring uh, plugins give us opportunity to uh, manage flows in some user interface and uh, as well as draw flows as the in some diagrams interface so if you find it convenient um, then you can try this approach. I just prefer uh, to edit the source file. But here we can do everything we can uh, do in the source file. Create some view states and uh, subflows as well. And some uh, decision states and link all those. actually never used it that might be quite useful for some and of course it edits source file automatically we see the some uh, uh, um, changes in our XML file so okay let's uh, close our main flow XML definition and create inside the same folder the view with name welcome main folder new file um, HTML new file HTML file click next and uh, give the name to that not just HTML but but as we remember our configuration we use X HTML extension and that is a convention uh, for uh, Java server faces and uh, Spring Web Flow so we, you should uh, keep these extensions correct click next here we choose the template as we use the X HTML then we choose one of these and I prefer always to use tra transitional ok click finish here's our welcome XHTML uh, though it will have uh, it will has a slightly different content in it so we can um, delete the rest of the content and just keep the XML version and, and uh, encoding and also keep the doc type to our doc type which will be not HTML but doc type composition and the next I will paste in the some uh, uh, facelet uh, composition with some namespaces and uh, you see here uh, many namespaces 
uh, like facelets with the UI tag which we'll use in our composition like here uh, GSF, HTML, GSF core and uh, here's the first um, place where we attach our GSF implementation prime faces uh, to use prime faces we'll use the P tag and uh, something called template that's kind of file uh, we'll create this folder and this file as well that uh, has uh, content inside which is uh, common for all web application or some uh, part of web application uh, that's shared between flows uh, for example that's uh, menu bars some uh, headers and uh, uh, footers so if the different flows point to the same general um, template then this all inside this general template will be shared between those uh, flows we'll use it uh, in more details uh, later when we will create our uh, flows and uh, user interface so you see the how it works just now just now it's uh, enough that you know what it is in this file you can use the HTML as well as uh, Java server faces and uh, using uh, you can use all of these additional features inside this file so let's save this file and uh, create our uh, template which will be inside the webin folder copy the templates and here's our webin folder inside that we create new folder called templates and then we create the general xhtml file inside that templates folder here's our file this and I paste it here the same as is uh, in our previous xhtml file um, the same namespaces except the you see that no template here because uh, we are editing uh, that template itself and just some addition content time declaration text html and our closing tags fine save it and because this this template is common uh, for all uh, our uh, application flaws then it should contain uh, the head and uh, body which is the part of uh, whole HTML pages um, that's uh, displaying in the web browser and we do it inside this uh, GSF tag and it looks like uh, uh, it, uh, we use uh, GSF uh, we, we create these uh, tags using GSF HTML uh, with the this uh, prefix you see this is uh, here this we use it and uh, that's gsf html and uh, the same way body so let's organize it and let's put inside the head tag some common things for HTML pages like uh, content type and title uh, yeah. ok 
currently we do not have uh, autocomplete feature for uh, GSF uh, code uh, and uh, we must know uh, precisely what we want to do and uh, write the uh, type the tags correct way and I'm sure this can be resolved with some additional Eclipse plugins so probably we will require it later for our convenience and inside title we put something interesting in. and uh, that is uh, open tag UI insert create attribute name and uh, let's close this in the name you can put any value you want but it's uh, good practice to put the same value uh, from the tag name and what does it mean? This is um, by by this we want to say that uh, um, we can insert the title from any flow uh, we want by referencing the this uh, name. It's like an uh, include from uh, some flow because this is our uh, common uh, general uh, template. You will see how it works, and the same we do in the body. Um, copy the UI insert and name this as body. That's temporary. Uh, later we will change it, and uh, to see if. Uh, our uh, configuration works. We just uh, will put in body before UI insert some heading. And type here something we will recognize. Let's say web flow. Facelets plus, and the rest of the our test string will be inserted through this uh, insert tag from the from the flow we will access. Save that, and let's go back to the our welcome uh, view. And here we want to reference the this insert name title, and to do that we type in um, UI define name this one. And inside that we put something, um, some some title. And we can do it uh, many ways. We can just type in something uh, or use the uh, Java surface HTML output capabilities like uh, H output text value and close tag and uh, here we put something uh, like a main flow and uh, you see we use uh, this prefix that means that we use gsf html mm, and that that's basically outputs this st string we typed in here. So the next thing we want is the same define just for another our insert and that is uh, name body. And 
here we do the same and just I'll put some, something different and as we as we typed in here we uh, typed in webflow and facelets plus and uh, here we will type Let's do it in the in the heading tags. And put here GSF works great. And save it. And okay, that will be our test case. Um, we can close now these two views and yet another thing we will require to do is uh, make the GSP page redirect to the uh, our flow which is created with some views inside and templates. Let's open it and uh, find the head tag uh, body head delete all that stuff inside leave body empty and here we type in meta http uh, equals refresh content following in uh, zero seconds to the URL uh, remember our application application slash main flow and close that Okay, managed to make GSP redirect on the first access to the our entry point to the webflow application. Close that and uh, and before we run our test case just to ensure that we have Java Rent Environment GDK instead of GRE. And to do that, we go to the execution environment and see that here's uh, GDK. And that's okay, that's correct. <coughs> and I think that we are ready to run our test um, execution. We have created a flow have uh, created the configuration beans all is, is included and uh, then uh, persistence log yeah okay everything looks fine let's try to compile this and then run on this server compile completed successfully and let's see how the our web application looks uh, in the target folder here's our uh, packaged version and here's unpackaged open it you see that all looks pretty similar except uh, web in folder which now contains all the configurations web xml and all other stuffs um, as well as uh, template libraries included flaws and in classes we have the logging options and persistence xml so now it's much heavier and configured so let's try to start and see what happens hope 
there were no no big exceptions. Uh, let's start server and uh, now you will see that uh, a lot of frameworks will come into play. Spring frameworks and Webflow and that will be all seen in the log console. So um, our uh, today's configuration should make all those libraries work together and give, uh, uh, give uh, us uh, the powerful platform. So, okay, start the server and let's see what it's here, what is uh, right to the our uh, console. I think there were exception. Let's see what's here. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, let's investigate this exception. Uh, we see that our serial engine was uh, started successfully. Then the some uh, connection exception. And you see that the network adapter could not establish the connection. And a long, long exception. Here's a hibernate, stack trace, spring framework, and all the our libraries now place. And uh, then the our uh, flow definitions uh, were read from the registry, and you see that one flow we had now here. Uh, our uh, console showed that it was registered successfully under the ID main and some other listeners joined uh, OK and we see that some additional uh, data and uh, here uh, we see information that uh, we are running prime faces 3.4 and otherwise uh, looks uh, good uh, let's just hope that that exception uh, which is related to the database connection will not uh, affect our application uh, at uh, currently so we do not have database in the moment and so uh, it should work with without the database just the co connection warning if not, then we um, will have to deal with it and fix it. Okay, let's try our application in the web browser. Open the web browser. And our application was like this. And if I'm correct, then when I hit enter to this, I will be redirected to the uh, our main flow, which is uh, uh, which will be processed by the Spring Web flow and uh, other Spring uh, and GSF libraries. So give it a try, and we get the exception. And let's see what's here. Our Spring Framework Web flow execution. Flow execution ex exception exception thrown in state. Well, welcome of flow main. Okay, go down. And here we see something, some some kind of parsing exception, and it's related to the. Oh, okay. Now it's clear. I used these uh, braces inside the value attribute. So it seems that it's not allowed there. So I'll just will go back to my Eclipse. And here you see that all you do in the application, uh, all the in configured in the our log for Java file will be logged into the Eclipse console. So the same exception we should see here. Um, uh, this the same as here. The 
you see that this is the same exception okay and the let's go to the our main flow and uh, fix that and by the way Let's try to put this in the end and try this way. Okay, <coughs> save it. Um, let's try without the restart. We'll see, maybe this will work fine. And again to the root application click enter and redirection to the our flow it seems that uh, restart is required so let's just try restart the server and let's see if it now works Redirect. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I I think I forget forgot to the uh, I forgot to uh, recompile our project. So go back to Eclipse and just additionally run the recompilation. Um. Yeah. This time the server should be stopped. stop and try again now it's successful and let's try again to start our server Okay guys, I, I've made a small pause and uh, have managed to resolve this exception. And uh, this was uh, the root cause of it, was the bug introduced in uh, 2.3 version of Webflow. And here's the Jira uh, describing the bug, the same as ours. Uh, so uh, make sure you just uh, change the the version of webflow library in our pom xml file so let's find the webflow and you see it here i have already changed it so this uh, before uh, the version was 2.3.0 and just change the version of uh, these two libraries Spring Faces and Spring Webflow from 2.30 to 2.31 uh, and uh, rebuild your project and that will would fix this bug okay uh, then uh, this bug is fixed and we are ready to test our uh, test case. So let's uh, stop the server uh, rebuild recompile the application and 
try to start the server. And go to the browser and execute the application root and we'll be we will be redirected to the main flow and see what happens then. Click OK and congratulations, all works fine. Now you see that Webflow worked great. Um, uh, we were redirected to the uh, Webflow entry point and you see this uh, URL string has changed with some execution parameters. And uh, that means that Webflow engine works and it resolves the, the URL strings so that uh, you do not have to worry about the URL strings which one uh, will point to the another, another page and so on so on. So this is all URL related uh, things will be handled by Webflow. So it will uh, print here some uh, parameters it requires for uh, successful execution and uh, take the management for uh, responsible for URL strings. So the facelets also works uh, because these two messages uh, divided by plus sign um, are uh, provided by the uh, template and uh, Webflow current flow view uh, cooperation and uh, GSF also works uh, because of we used the GSF special text to output the these text so all is working very good and uh, we can move forward and yeah um, the title were uh, injected uh, successfully as well. So uh, let's look at our console and we see that no more exceptions here, just uh, straightforward execution. We see that main flower requested uh, launched many interesting things happens here. And here we can see that uh, our uh, welcome XHTML word was rendered. Okay, and the last thing I will do is uh, I'll uh, comment this all changes to the Google repository so that you can copy paste it and do not have to type it manually. So I start this server, stop this server. And, uh, okay, team. And uh, framework configs. Okay. Framework configuration. And let's see what's here and what we need, what we do not need. Okay, from the very beginning, these two are not required. Home file, I've changed, uh, made some changes, so it's required for Java. Okay, 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 okay. And 
now you can uh, browse the code on the repository and uh, probably check out in your Eclipse if you remember this is this one Here is the uh, revision for the commit that I've just made, framework configuration, and uh, all changes are inside. All the modified and uh, new files are listed here, and you just can browse. files and here's log for Java persistence XML web inf all configuration files uh, can open and uh, copy it so fine so guys see you next time uh, when we will uh, install our Oracle database and uh, create the user interface for our application and uh, maybe a lot more. <laughs>